Hello everyone, I'm Ben and in this video we're going to be creating a Greek Doric column in Houdini. Let's jump into it. Okay, over in my object context I'm going to press tab and type geo, enter, enter, and enter. So I'm inside the geo node and I'm going to drop down a circle by pressing tab and typing circle, pressing enter, enter. Here it is. Okay, so first things first I want to change the primitive type from primitive to polygon because I'm going to be using booleans on this later on. I want to make sure the orientation is a little bit more up and down using the ZX plane. And at the moment we can see that it's a little bit darker on this face than down here, meaning that if I do an extrusion it's going to go down. So I'm going to flip this like a pancake 180. Now it's going to extrude up instead. Perfect. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, speaking of extrude, let's get a little extrude going. I'm going to come over to my cut here and press tab, press poly extrude or type poly extrude and press enter and just connect that up move my display flag down poly extrude and middle click and drag on distance to give it a little bit of height now what i'm going to do to actually create the sculpt features is at each one of these points create a cylinder and that's going to subtract out and then i'll have each cylinder here subtract out from these points and that will create the sculpt features around the main column so to do that i'm going to create a tube by pressing tab, typing tube, press enter, drop that down and then I'm going to copy these tubes to each one of the points on this circle. So I'll, to get the points from the circle I'm just going to press tab and type CTP that will choose copy to points, press enter on the numpad, enter again and now I'm just going to bring in the circle to the right input and the tube to the left one. If I move my display flag to the copy to points, we can see we get all the tubes, but they're orientated in an undesirable fashion. So I'm going to come over to my tube here and make sure that the um, orientation is set from Y to Z. Now we get a nice spire graph pattern. Lovely. So the next thing is they're a little bit too big, so I'm going to change the radius scale to 0.2. And I want to use these for booleans later on. So I'm going to make sure the primitive type is set from primitive to polygon and also make sure they've got end caps so that they're watertight volumes. Nice. So with that done, I'm going to go and say, let's, let's uh, go and do that boolean that I mentioned. So I'm going to press tab and type boolean and press enter, enter again to drop it down. Run in the result of the copy to points, my small tubes and the extruded main column. Move my boolean down here and it's not working what's ha happening here all right cross border boundary unshared edges now i'm guessing my extrusion i didn't output the back so here select the extrude node make sure the output back is on and now we've got a volume there as well and we're getting some booleaning happening except it's not the one i'm after so i'll select the boolean node and switch my operation from a minus b this being a this being b to b minus a Okay, now it looks like I'm getting what I'm after. Except these subtractions are, or these tubes I should say, are just sitting on the ground and I want them to be halfway up this main column at any given time. So what I can do is say, all right, let's create a transform node in here and it's going to move these cylinders up, right, half of whatever this extrusion amount is. All right, let's do it. Press tab. Create a transform, press enter, drop it down on this line here. And now in the translate Y, we need to get half of this distance amount. So I'm going to right click in here and copy this parameter. And then go over to my transform and under translate Y, I'm going to right click and paste the relative reference to that parameter. And so that's going to put it all the way those tubes all the way to the top of the main cylinder. So I only want to go halfway up. So I'll divide by two. Press enter and that's looking good. Okay, so there's the uh, the main show. But uh, let's see what happens. If I change my extrusion by coming over to the extrude node and changing the distance, extruding it up, aha, we can see that the height of these tubes is not changing. So let's go and make sure that while we have this relative reference in our memory, we'll go over to the tube and change the height to match that relative reference. So I'll right click and choose paste relative references. 
press enter. There we go. Now, whatever the height of the extrusion is will also be the height of the tube. So we can just adjust one value here and that will scale nicely. Let's add some top plates to this. And so first of all, I'm just going to bring this down like so. Move around here a little bit and I'm going to add a cylinder here that kind of flares out. So to do that, I'll type press tab and create a tube, enter, enter. I want to see the tube and I want to template the, the result of the Boolean here. So I can see basically when is this cylinder going to be just larger than this? Because it's got to sit atop it and I want it to look flush. All right, cool. First thing, I'm going to grab my tube. I'm going to change it from a primitive type to a polygon type. Then I'm going to go and say, all right, it's, I'm not going to worry too much about these little features here overlapping. I'm going to go to the height and set this to 0.5. Yeah, that's good. And now I want to flare it out with using a linear taper. So I'll press tab and type the word linear and press enter on the numpad. All right, let's connect them up, move the display flag down. And with this linear taper, you can see that at the moment, the taper amount is set to one, which just means as it is right now. So if I double that, I'm actually going to get some tapering, but I'm not getting it in the direction that I'm expecting because you can see the capture direction is on the Z and that's the positive Z direction, I believe. Yes, that's the positive Z. So that makes sense, but I just need to change the capture direction from Z to Y. Now, if we move around, we can see that's uh, what I was expecting. And so I'm just gonna go and say, all right, I've got that where I want. You can adjust the taper to your liking and then go and say, I need to move this on top of my um, my main column. So I'm going to add a transform, pressing tab, typing transform, enter, drop it down, connect it up, move the display flag. And we just need to change that translate Y. So that is from our poly extrude distance amount. So I'll right click, copy parameter, come down to the transform and paste it in the Y as a relative res reference and it jumps up now. However, I don't think it's enough. If I, let's see, click and drag and move this up. And so the distance is higher and press W on the keyboard to go to wireframe. We can see that it's only moving up half. It's moving to the top of this, but it's not accounting for its own actual height. This tube here is moving to the top of the main column, but it's not moving up half of its own height as well. So let's grab half of its own height as well by selecting the tube going to the height, right click, copy parameter, come down to the transform and extend this so that after here, we're going to be adding on some more height and I'm gonna right click and paste relative references. Now we really want half of this height here. So I'm gonna divide by two, press enter. Looks good. So now we, if I press W, it should be a little bit more visible. This will move up and down according to this height here, our like poly extrude. So next thing I want to add is a final top to this. But just before that, I'm going to close up this tube. So I'll select the tube, make sure that it's got end caps, beautiful. And then I'm going to create a merge node for these ones. So I'll press tab and type merge, drop that down, bring my Boolean result down, bring this tube down and set the template flag for the merge because I want to look at the actual box as I create it. So speaking of creating a box, I'm going to press tab, type the word box, enter, enter. And with this one, I know the size that I want is 2.75 on the X, 0.5 on the Y and 2.75 on the Z. I'm going to move my display flag over to the box so we can actually see it. And it's looking roughly how I want it, except it's a little bit too low down. So I'm going to adjust this box by adding a transform as well. And in this case, I can actually just save myself a lot of this work here by holding the alt key and clicking and drag this transform node over here and connecting it up as like so. And so that now when I come down to, for instance, this transform node, I can see that it moves up to the same position as this tube. Well, that's pretty good, uh, but not good enough. So what I'm going to do is say, I need you to move, right? This value here needs to move up all of the extrusion distance, then 
all of the uh, cyl cylinder or tube distance here and then half of the box distance. So what do we have? We've got the main column distance, then half of the tube distance. So I'll get rid of that and prepare it for half of the box height as well. So I'll select the box, come up to the box height, right click, copy parameter, come back down to this transform, drop it down, press right click, paste relative references, divide by two, and now that's sitting right in place. Lovely. So to get this looking a little sharper, I'm just pressing W to uh, toggle between wireframe and shaded. I'm gonna move my display flag down to the merge. And you can see now that if I grab my poly extrude, I can click and drag in the distance and that will move the entire uh, selection up and down to the height that I like. Cool, now one thing I would like to improve, well, I would like to make maybe these tubes a little bit bigger. They're a little bit too small. So I might come up to either here and change my radius scale so that they're 0.3 or 0.25. Or I might do something like change my circle so that there was more divisions and get a number around there that I like. So once I'm happy with that look, I just want to go and add some poly beveling here. So down under the box, I'm going to add a poly bevel. So I'll press tab, type poly bevel, enter to drop that down just under the box. And in this case, I'm going to give a little bit of a distance, not too much. Make sure that I bring up the divisions and say that looks quite good. Now, I also want to have a poly bevel on this part here. So that's rounded off a little bit. So I'll drop down another poly bevel. And this one is going to be just after the linear taper. And we can see that it's also beveling these edges here. If I press W, you can see if I take this distance up a little bit more, that those are getting beveled as well. So I don't want that. So I'm going to come to exclusions and say ignore flat edges and just tell it how high an angle it has to ignore. So if I drag this up, you'll see that it's quite high when I only have a few subdivisions on this tube. So if I were to go and take this column's value up to 24, I could actually get away with a lower maximum normal angle here. Yeah, like so, all right. Hopefully that makes sense. And with that, I'll press W. Well, there we go. We have ourselves a nice Greek Doric column. I hope that helps and I'll see you in another video.